And we are back. Hello, everyone. It is Wednesday when we're back to read about our next artist and artists and their pets. All right. So I hope you're having a good hump day, middle of the week. No end in sight. <laughs> All right. Suzanne Valadon was a French artist and model. Cats must have seen similarities to themselves in this bold, independent, smart, and beautiful artist, as several followed her home, where she fed and she cared for them. Her artist son adored cats as much as she did. Here we can see an illustration of Suzanne and her cats and a painting of a cat. Marie Clementine Valadon was born in a small town in northeastern France. They don't tell you this right away, but Marie is her. They tell you later on, which I think is helpful to know right now. Marie Clementine, Clementine, Clementine Valadon was born in a small town in northeastern France. She and her mother were poor, and they moved to Montmartre in, uh, Montmartre in Paris when she was five. Montmartre was like the art mecca in Paris. Never been. Can't say. Never been. By the time she was 11, she had to work to earn money. She loved cats, but was too poor to have one. Montmartre was a poor but bustling area, and Marie had several jobs. Pastry cook, vegetable seller, waitress, and circus acrobat. At 15, however, she fell from a trapeze, hurting her back and ending her career in the circus. That's her feeding a cat. Guessing while she was a waitress, she'd see little kitties and give them food. As Montmartre was a lively artist community, Marie became an artist's model. For over 10 years, she modeled for several artists, including Pierre Pouvis de Chavon, Berta Morisot, Pierre Auguste Renoir, Henri Toulouse Lautrec. Although her name was Marie, Toulouse Lautrec nicknamed her Suzanne after a biblical character. And she preferred it. I looked that up and I think it's something from like the book of Daniel. I don't know much about that. Inspired by the community around her in between modeling, Valadon began drawing and painting. She produced colorful drawings and still lifes, portraits and flowers, uh, and portraits and flower and landscape paintings. Just there's just some like awkward grammatical things that I come across in this book, and painting and did it and did it. Figure it out. She also painted female nudes, which in those days was a highly unusual subject for women artists. All right, I know this isn't like anything new to people. There's a lot of nudes in art sometime. Studying the human form and drawing it was always really big and still is big in um, your skills as a artist. Um, she, however, being a woman, they weren't typically the ones drawing the naked women. It was usually the men. So she's kind of groundbreaking here for that. It don't matter. Artists loved painting Valadon as she was dark-haired and attractive, and she stood or sat still. That was very important. Renoir, a well-known impressionist, painted her in several famous pictures, including Dance at Bougival, City Dance, Girl Braiding Her Hair, and Suzanne Valadon. When she was 18, she had a son named Maurice Utrio. Although many people did not believe that one of her boyfriends, one of her boyfriends, Spanish artist Miguel Utrio, was actually Maurice's father. If he was not, however, no one knew who his father really was. Scandalous. But also, who cares? In the early 1890s, Valadon became friends with the artist Edgar Degas, who was not known as a friendly person. 
Yet, Degas and Valadon became close. Degas encouraged Valadon with her art and bought some of her drawings and paintings. They remained close friends until his death in 1917. At first, Valadon drew more than painted, but from 1892, she painted more. That year, she painted her first female nude. Also during the 1890s, she exhibited her work, often at the Galerie Bernheim Jeune in Paris, and initially she mostly exhibited portraits. Her first models were Maurice, her mother, her niece, and the composer and pianist Eric Satie, who was her boyfriend for six months in 1893. In 1896, she married the banker Paul Moussis, and for the first time she could afford to become a full-time painter. For a lot of the time, Maurice was looked after by both Suzanne and her mother. As he grew up, Maurice became difficult. He often missed school, and when he was older, he became an alcoholic. At 21, he suffered with a mental illness, and to help him, Valadon encouraged him to paint. She taught him what Degas had taught her, and to her delight, he had great artistic skills and was soon drawing and painting around Montmartre. And as you'll see, his talent was quite well developed and really um, beautifully captured the Paris neighborhood of Montmartre. Over the years, Valadon had many cats that she loved dearly. Every fr Friday, rather than cat food, she gave them expensive beluga caviar. Mmm. Beluga. Never had it. Maurice loved cats as much as his mother did. For several years, besides cats, Suzanne Valadon also had a German sheepdog and a goat. She fed the goat her drawings if she was not happy with them. Goats eat everything. Hey, you know, I guess better not to create trash. It'll become fertilizer when the goat eats it out. <laughs> by 1910, Maurice had become famous for his paintings of Montmartre. By then, Valdon was exhibiting her paintings at the Paris Salon, an important annual exhi exhibition where a jury selected the art to be displayed. Some of her paintings that were displayed at the Salon included Adam and Eve, The Joy of Living, and Casting the Met, all of which have naked people in it, so I'm not going to put those on the screen. Mainly using oil paint, oil pencils, pastels, and red chalk, Valdon created richly colored pictures and often outlined objects and figures with black lines to show their curves and structures. So this is a close-up of one of her paintings, and you can see the black lines and a uh, the, the, the lot of shades of red and the curves and all that. Her intense colors were inspired by her friends who were post-impressionists and by the Fauvist art movement. Post-impressionists were among the first artists to paint with bold, bright colors to express what they felt about the scenes they painted. The Fauves came after them and painted in even bolder colors, distorting their views of nature. Valdon was not shy about painting strong or nude women, which contrasted with the usual depictions of passive females. This probably reflected her own personal outlook on life. So instead of showing the woman as this like passive, like, oh, woe is me, she tried to show them in stature of um, positivity and strength. Woman power. Before Valadon married Moussis, she had affairs with several of the artists she modeled for, including Pouvis de Chavans and Renoir. For 14 years, she remained married to Moussis, but when she was 44, she met the artist André Utter, who was 23. She left her husband for him. They had several joint exhibitions, and Utter posed for some of her paintings. Hey, you know, living her life. Valadon's cats were also often her models. She painted several during her career. Tabby cats, white cats, a ginger, orange. In the paintings, they sit or relax on tables, rugs, or blankets near flowers 
or on the laps of Valdon's friends. She rarely named her cats in her paintings, except for one. And here's a little illustration. Except for one. In 1919, she found Ramino in a Montmartre alleyway. She painted him several times, and like the other cats in her paintings, he always looked contented and well-fed. And as you can see him there in the uh, painted picture, he looks like a nice, happy orange tabby. And here's a little illustration of him. Ramino, or Raminu. I don't speak French, so I'm not sure of the pronunciation. Val Valadon was unusual uh, during a time when most women conformed to a certain way of behaving. Bold and confident, she was friends with men and women, was outspoken and determined to make her way as an artist, and did not give up working, as most women did, after marriage. Many described her as a beautiful and voluptuous woman with blue eyes, porcelain skin, thick dark hair, the color of cognac. Utter and Valadon married when World War I began in 1914, and Utter volunteered for military service. As a soldier's wife, she received an allowance from the army. Maurice, on the other hand, was rejected for military service and once again was sent to a mental institution. Valadon painted little during that time, although she did have her first solo exhibition in 1915. Valadon's first solo exhibition was a great success. Although many visitors were shocked by her paintings, some other artists and art critics admired them. She became the first female painter to be accepted into the prestigious Société Nationale des Beaux-Arts, making her extremely successful at a time when few women became artists. Go Suzanne. Go Suzanne, you make all the art and you kick the other artist's butt. I'm losing my mind, people. After the war, Valadon carried on painting and drawing, and in 1920 she was elected to exhibit in the prestigious Salon d'Atome. In 1924, she signed a contract with the Bernheim June Art Gallery, which gave her an income. She bought a country estate, but by the 1930s, her health began to decline. But she had this nice, wonderful country estate um, where her and Uter, Utter um, lived and worked. Maurice and Utter moved out, but she was never lonely. The rest of her life was filled with friends and cats. Hmm. So, you know, she had a few boyfriends. She did her thing. She lived her life. Can't blame her. I'm not going to shame her. Back then, she would have been probably frowned upon by other women, but this woman just living her life. I'm going to cry. Um, so, yeah. You. I mean, I never heard of her. So, like, my, my gears weren't turning yet when thinking about what you guys could do for um, for art. But I'm thinking kind of like the style she used, where she mostly used reds and chalk and dark black outlines, thick outlines. So maybe you could do a portrait or illustration of your cat, if you have one, or a cat, or a friend, um, as she did seem to do that, or even a still life. Um, that would be really nice. You could make any kind of modern still life you want. It could be something old-fashioned like flowers or whatever if you want to go that route. Or you could put together something fun and interesting like Legos and Pokemon stuff. And set them up, draw it with thick black outlines, and then color it in with whatever material you have at home. So, I like that idea. I'm going to stick with that. Um, so make me a still life. Share it with me. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully I'm not feeling as loopy because, <sighs> you know, I just miss you guys. All right. I miss being in front of you. All right. I'll see you soon.